Greetings, Professor Hobo here with a Hobo Tech Tip about these new drop-in lithium batteries that are becoming super popular and everybody is now buying them. What these batteries are designed to do is replace a lead-acid battery in an RV house system or an off-grid solar system, something like that. And how they're supposed to work is that you just remove your old lead-acid battery you drop one of these into place, use your same lead acid charger, use your same lead acid solar controller, no problem, 99% of the time. But sometimes if you overdo it and you discharge them all the way to zero, the power drops so low that the BMS inside the battery shuts off, meaning nothing comes out of the battery. When you kill a lead acid battery, it might be 10 volts. When you kill a lithium battery, it's zero volts. So what do you do if you're using a drop-in lithium battery and it just suddenly dies on you, your power goes out, and your battery charger won't work? Because most battery chargers and even most solar controllers will not charge a completely dead lithium iron phosphate battery. But I'm gonna show you three ways today that you can jumpstart this out of its dirt nap and get it back online. Now in my last lithium battery review, I did say that you can just drop these in place in your RV or in your solar array and just use them as is like you would a lead acid battery. And this is true almost all the time. You can actually discharge one of these batteries all the way down to 1% and have zero problems whatsoever. But the issue arises is when you actually discharge it all the way down to zero and the battery management system inside, which is a little electronic circuit board, has no power to even stay on. So the fact that it turns itself off means that the battery puts out zero volts or very low voltage, so low that your battery charger, which is what this is, this is a typical battery charger you might use in an RV or an off-grid solar array, this will no longer work. I actually have this hooked up right now. It's not coming on, it's completely dead. Now I completely killed this battery so that I can demonstrate three ways to bring it back to life. Essentially, all you gotta do is just jumpstart it. But a lot of times people are like, well, I don't have another battery laying around or what can I jumpstart it with? Now what I'm about to show you might save your behind if you're using any brand lithium iron phosphate drop-in replacement battery. Now, if you already have a solar controller that has a lithium setting on it, most of those will actually jumpstart these batteries. Same thing with these inverters. If you have an inverter that has a lithium setting on it, it will very likely charge up a completely dead lithium battery. Now, I know everyone hates reading manuals, but I'm gonna make a suggestion here. If you're not sure if your solar controller or your charger has a lithium setting, open the manual and read. If it does have a lithium setting, it should mention in there that it will actually bring back to life dead lithium batteries. If that's the case, this video really isn't gonna help you. You can go ahead and turn it off. Now for everybody else who has one of these in their RV or a solar array or pretty much any scenario that you're gonna use this battery and you're using it on a charger or a solar controller that does not have a lithium setting. Now, unless you have a brand new RV or a brand new solar array set up, it might not have a lithium setting, especially cheaper controllers. If you get a cheaper PWM controller, it probably doesn't have a lithium setting and even if it does it probably won't kickstart a dead lithium battery this one I got about a year and a half ago it doesn't have the lithium setting it's inevitable that this is gonna happen to you at 3 o'clock in the morning in the middle of a thunderstorm and then your inverter charger won't turn on because it won't detect the battery so that's the problem if this is putting out zero or just one or two volts, the inverter won't even see it, it's there, and it won't even turn on. You can flip the switches all day long, it won't come on. Now, what I'm about to show you only takes a few seconds to do. It works pretty much instantly. Might save your butt. Now, there are many ways to do this, but I think these are gonna be the three most popular ways, probably the three ways that most people are gonna do it. You can use practically anything that puts out 12 volts, even a wall charger. Like if you have a wall charger you plug in it puts out 12 volts, any kind of 12 volt battery charger. Okay, first things first, I wanna show you this battery is actually completely dead. Now I have this little circuit tester. It basically has an incandescent bulb in it. I have it hooked up to the negative terminal. And when I touch this to the positive terminal, you would see a bright enough light that would show up on camera. Now, obviously it's completely dead. This here is a battery shunt, which is hooked up to the battery. You can see it's not turned on. There is no backlight. 
nothing on the LCD. I can flip the switch all day long, nothing happens because it doesn't see the battery there. So first and most common is going to be to use something like a lithium battery jump starter. Now it doesn't have to be a lithium battery. It could be one of those old AGM jump starters. I'm, I don't think anybody uses those anymore. Those batteries don't last very long in those sealed lead acid chargers. These things you can charge up leaving your car for a year and forget about it. So I'm just gonna simply hook this up, plug this in, just like I'm gonna jump a battery on a car, just like I'm gonna jump a starter battery. You can see the lights are blinking there and means it's on. All you gotta do is hook the positive to the positive of the battery, the negative to the negative. And if you have a string of parallel batteries together and they're all dead, this will work on all of the batteries. Now, obviously this trick isn't gonna work if you have the batteries set up in series. This is only for 12 volt systems. Okay, here's our jump starter. It's on and ready to go. Basically, it just has two clamps. You hook up the red to the positive and the black to the negative. Now, this is very important. Make sure when you look on the battery, you see a plus sign before you use your red clamp. Now, this battery is obvious. It's got a nice red ring. We got red cables coming out of it. It's super obvious that that's positive and that's negative. Not all batteries are labeled that nicely. Some of them just have the plus and minus and the terminals are black. So super important, make sure this says plus, otherwise you could cause a fire. Okay, so we got our clamp there on the positive, but I want you to see something here. You'd see where it says VOL, V -O -L. that's the voltage of the battery right now, 0.4. So it's not even one volt. I stick this on the positive, you don't see the light inside. But watch what happens as soon as I touch this to the negative battery terminal. Immediately you see the voltage jumping up on the battery. Now it's almost 11 volts. You can clearly see we have power. I can turn this on and it powers up. Now it's actually gonna charge the battery. So there you have method one using a jump starter. Now any jump starter will do. It doesn't have to be this big. You can, you can use the, the smallest jump starters they make. All it has to do is put out 12 volts. Now I'll show you the next method. Now this is an old crappy 35 amp hour AGM lead acid battery, probably 10 years old at this point. I keep it around for experiments. It doesn't get any use. It's probably discharged to 60 or 70% right now. But this is just to prove to you, you can use any 12 volt battery to do this trick. Now test number two, I don't have actual jumper cables, but I'm using a battery clamp. All I have to do is touch this to the terminal for a few seconds. So you can use regular jumper cables. You can use whatever you got. You can use just bare pieces of wire if necessary to get your batteries jump started. You don't need anything fancy. This is supposed to be cheap, simple, and easy just like me. Okay, again, battery is totally dead. It's reading 0.1 volts. I already have the negative on this battery, running over to the negative on the lithium battery. And for the positive, I'm just gonna touch it. As soon as I do this, it's going to start up the inverter, which is turned off right now. So let's, let's watch what happens. It just started it up. And there we have it, it's already at 11 volts. It just took that split second to jump start it. Now watch as we kill the battery. See this light's on. The battery is quickly tumbling down below 10 volts. You're gonna see that light get dimmer and dimmer until it's just gonna completely shut off. Yeah, it just completely shut off. See that light is gone. This is exactly how lithium batteries act. It will just completely shut off like that. So now again, it's dead a fraction of a volt, less than 0.1 volts. This won't turn on. See, it won't come on at all. Okay, I know I'm gonna get a ton of hate for what I just did. I created a spark that could have caused a fire. It could have been a mushroom cloud that could have ended the world. Like the whole galaxy could have imploded in on itself because I created a spark in a controlled environment. Okay, let me show you another way to do that without creating a spark but this is gonna cost you a couple dollars. I now have this resistor. It's a big fat resistor that I use for pre-charging inverters. Now I have this tied to the positive lead of the battery. So instead of creating a spark, it's going to slowly send power in. See, there we go. No spark, it sent power into the battery. Although it wasn't enough to turn on the inverter, I need to give it a little more juice. Because it's a resistor, it takes a while, so, oh, there we go. And we're up to 11 volts plus because now it's charging the battery. So go ahead and turn it off for our next test. 
So yeah, you get these little resistors all over Amazon. If you want one, I have it on my Amazon page. Like I said, they're a couple bucks. I do have one other method to show you how to jump the battery without a spark. And this is something that probably most guys in America who have a workshop or a garage have, and that's one of these cheapo testing lights. These testing lights come in just about every cheap mechanics kit you can buy because they're used for testing electrical circuits like fuses in a car. So you can actually use one of these to soft start the battery without a spark. So again, we've killed our battery and now I have this hooked up to the positive lead of the battery. And we're gonna go ahead and jump the battery using the tester because that's all it takes and there's not gonna be a spark because it does it slowly with a light bulb. Now watch, bada bing. Give it a second and there we go. We are now at 10 volts and that's enough to get the battery charger to kick in. So there are a couple cheapy freebie ways to do a battery to battery without creating a spark. Now the third and final method to jumpstart a lithium battery is gonna blow a few people's minds. And that is using a Jackery. Yes, pretty much any solar generator that has a 12 volt output, you can use to jumpstart another lithium battery. Now, I'm not saying this is gonna work with every solar generator, but I know Jackery's with their regulated 12 volt output, 13.2 volts, and that's more than enough. And these have circuitry built in so you can't accidentally backfeed and blow up anything inside the Jackery. So this thing's at least three years old. It's super old school. Look at that old screen. That's so 2019. But it'll work just fine to kickstart the heart. You can actually buy an adapter on Amazon that will plug into the 12 volt and has jumper cables on one side. And it's meant for kind of helping you start your car if you get stranded somewhere. Now that's a Jackery branded product. It's something like 25 or 30 bucks. If you really want to get that, I do have it on my page, hubotech.tv slash Amazon. I'll put a link below in the description if you want to snag it up. However, for this method, you can do it pretty cheap. All you need is one of these and you can buy these all day long on Amazon. Again, I can probably put a link in the description for you for these specific ones that I bought. I put an Anderson connector on the end because I use this for everything and this end just has some bare leads on it. That's all it is. Again, you don't need alligator clamps. You don't need anything special. You just have to just touch the leads to the battery for 10 seconds at most and bring it back to life. So all we have to do is make sure we get positive to positive and negative to negative. So that's very important. You don't wanna get those backwards because you could mess up your solar generator. Okay, here's our old school Jackery. It's got 89% charge with a cigarette lighter plugged in. I got one lead stuck to the negative just with a little alligator clamp there. And again, all we gotta do is touch the positive lead and we shouldn't get any sparks on this, again, because the Jackery kind of buffers the output. But let's watch and see what happens. Look at that. Instantly. That was like a lithium battery jump starter for a car. I mean, that was like less than a second. And here we go. We got our charger coming on. You can hear it kick on. We got this, which I'll show you. That is now working. And we're up to 11 and a half volts. So there you go, three very easy methods to jumpstart a dead lithium battery. Don't get stranded without power. Use any of these methods to allow yourself to jumpstart a lithium battery if it ever dies on you. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box.